Well, in this short video, I'm going to introduce you to the major components of the Stata interface. Here I've loaded up Stata, and I've got a little uh, sample data set, and I've run some Stata commands, and we're going to use this as a way to walk through the major features of the Stata interface. So Stata is organized around a series of windows. For example, you have the review window in the upper left. This is where commands that you've entered or executed are displayed. And you can replay them or copy them and use them again. All of the command windows are labeled except for one, which is the results window. The results window in this layout of Stata is the largest window. And you can see that I have an error. I entered a command called generous, which doesn't exist, and I received an error and that I've run a reg uh, regression and the results show up in that particular window. There's also a variables list window which is on the right and here I have a list of the variables and labels attached to them. I can make these windows different sizes so I can read better and you can see that I have variables like make, price, miles per gallon and so forth. Labels are very useful. Not all data sets have them. I encourage you to use them to um, create them for your own data sets so that it makes it easier for you and others to use your data. The next window is the properties window. And there, when we highlight a particular variable, it gives us information about that variable. For example, I've highlighted the variable make for make and model of this automobile. And you can see in the variables window, it gives me the name, the label, the type of variable, and here it's listed as str18, so it tells me that it's a string or character variable, and it tells me the format of the variable. If I highlight something like price, you can see that the variable information in the variable window changes, so it gives me again the name and the label. You can see the type of this variable is integer, and its display format is 8.0GC and we'll cover display format some other time. I'll come down one more to miles per gallon and again you can see how that changes. Also in the properties window you get information about your data set. It tells us our file name and whether there's notes and additional information like the number of variables, number of observations, and how large the data set is. Moving on to the next window is our command window. If you enter your commands one command at a time, this is where you're going to uh, do that. I use the command window a lot to test commands, to try things out, to experiment, to try different options. And when I find things that work, I then copy that command, often right out of the review window, and paste it into a program editor window where I can save all my commands and I can run that program later. There's some other things that you can see in the window here that are really important for us. Down in the way lower left is the current directory. When Stata starts, when you begin, when you execute the Stata command to start the program, there will be a default directory. In my case, it's c colon backslash users backslash allen backslash documents. This could be different on every computer you go to. This is the default directory where Stata expects to find data files and program files. You can change this to any directory that's available on your computer and you're probably going to want to change it when you start writing your programs. Over on the right hand side just above the command window you can see that there are two um, notifications there. The first one says log on SMCL. This is telling me that I have a log turned on so that anything that's written to the results window, all the information in the results window, is being saved in a file that I can look at later. I could print, I could email it, or just save it for my own use. A little bit further to the right, it tells me that I have a command log on. The command log is different than our normal log file. And what the command log file does is anytime you enter a command in the command window, it's captured in the command log and then saved later. So you could make a complete listing of all the commands you've executed in a state of session and go back and edit them or rerun that program later. I'm going to close these files to show you how the command window works. So first I'm going to move my cursor down to command and then I'm going to just type in the first command which is log 
close. Notice how my notification changed and I get some results in the results window. It tells me the name of the file and where it's located. In this case, it's saved in the default directory and it's called demonstration.smcl. I'll go ahead and turn the command log off as well. And you can see that that notification has now ended, no longer there. And any commands I issue now in the command window will not be written to that file. Both those files are saved on disk and we can look at them um, at some other time. Moving to the top of the Stata interface, you can see that there's a number of graphical icons up here. When you move your cursor over an icon, as I've done here, it opens up a little window, a little, um, a little note explaining to you what that icon does. So we can open a file, in this case a data file, we can save a data file, we can print our results, we can begin a log, close a log, or suspend or resume logging uh, our information in the results window. We can open a viewer file. We can bring graphics windows to the front. We don't have any open right now. This is pretty important. We can open a new do file editor. Stata programs are called do files and they're simple text files but you're going to end up writing a lot of small do files and saving them and you use this key to open up the editor and again we'll cover that later. We have a data editor. If you want to edit your data manually in a spreadsheet-like environment, you can use this button. I don't recommend this. It's, there's no audit trail, no way to track the changes you've made easily. You can browse your data with this button. We have a variable managers icon. It helps us search through large data sets and use filtering to find variables that we're interested in and we have a clear or more condition. Um, you won't see this on any of my Stata equipped computers because I set more off and what this is is when um, the default in Stata is that when your results window screen fills up it says more at the bottom and it pauses so it shows you one screen full at a time. Personally I don't like that feature and so I shut it off and then finally there's this red button here. Well, it's grayed out here, but if you're running a program and it's taking a long time to run, it will be red. And if you click on it, it will terminate your program. It's the same as using control break if you have those two keys on your computer. My laptop, which I'm using here, doesn't have the control break key. It has a control key, but no break key. And so I have to use that button. Finally, we have a menuing system at the top. And if we click on any one of these menus, for example file, it shows us submenus. So these menus are hopefully logical. One of the menus that you can use a lot, I can go to statistics, summary tables and texts, tests, summary and descriptive statistics, we're getting deep into these menus, and summary statistics, and if I click on that, this is a left click, it opens up a dialog box. So one way to learn Stata, and we'll have a video on this, uh, another video on this with more details, is that you can learn how to use all the commands and how to use all the options, which can be fairly intimidating early on by filling out these dialog boxes. For example, I'm going to go ahead and pick price from a drop-down menu, miles per gallon from the drop-down menu, and let's use weight from the drop-down menu. And I'm not going to take any other options. I'm going to say this is all I want. And down here at the bottom I have three keys that I can press, three buttons I can press. OK, Cancel, and Submit. Cancel is how I back out. This is not the menu I want it to be in. This isn't where I want to be. If I hit Cancel, it's just going to close the dialog box and take me back to the Stata interface. If I click OK, it's going to take all the options I've selected in this dialog box submit them to Stata, whether they're correct or not, or what I want or not, and then it's going to close the dialog window. Submit will submit the commands, run the commands that you've selected here, but leave this window open. So I'm going to move this box a little out of the way, and I'm going to click on Submit, 
which will leave this dialog box open and you can see the results in the results window. Now I like leaving this box open because now I can play and I can say well let's click on display additional statistics and click submit and I'm gonna to come to my results window and scroll back you can see that Stata provides for me the command right here summarize price miles per gallon and weight comma detail so checking that box added that option and you can see I have a lot more information and here's the command if I want to save this command I can just copy it from here and paste it or paste it to another file or I can come up here to my review window where all my commands are listed and if I want to make this a bit wider you can see I can show the full command here right click and copy and then I could paste it into another file to save for later and I could rerun this program again well there you go there's the first introduction to the Stata interface and how it works hopefully you found this useful and we'll be producing other videos on how to use Stata to help you learn um, what you need to know to complete the statistics classes here at Maryland. Thank you.